CSU East Bay's ASI Presents held its weekly Wednesday Nooners on September 1st with folk pop musician Bobby Joe Valentine. The Supreme Court overruled the CDC's extension of the eviction moratorium in late August, leaving millions of Americans worried about housing instability as the COVID-19 pandemic continues to overwhelm the country. Hello, I'm Monet Trochi, the editor-in-chief of The Pioneer Online. And I'm Scarlett Schwenk, the managing editor of The Pioneer. Welcome to the first episode of The Pioneer Online's East Bay Weekly. Where we report on campus and community stories affecting the lives of students and communities surrounding the East Bay. Jocelyn Morales, the Pioneer's video editor and in collaboration with CSU East Bay's East Bay Live, captured ASI Presents' second Wednesday Nooner event featuring Bobby Joe Valentine who performed in the Old University Union. Wednesday Nooners is a weekly event to aid in connecting students and bringing campus life back after over 18 months of virtual learning due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The Supreme Court's decision to overrule the CDC's recommendation to extend the eviction moratorium will not affect California residents with the passage of Bill SB 91, which provided over $2 billion in emergency rental assistance. Stay tuned to find out more about the Supreme Court's decision and Wednesday Nooner's Bobby Joe Valentine. The California State Senate extended a grace period for California renters, protecting their homes for a few more months to avoid eviction during the ongoing health crisis. Here we are now with Ariana Aramillo. What exactly does SB 91 cover? SB 91 covers protections uh, uh, for landlords and tenants. More importantly, it provides funding uh, for housing programs, uh, the California State Housing Program, more importantly. And one of the few things that it covers is, for example, landlords, if you're looking into a new place. They can't use the fact that you haven't paid rent due to the pandemic against you if you're trying to apply. Um, they can't use that as a reason to reject your application. Uh, for landlords, it protects that if they accept 20% of the debts from uh, the past few months, the government is willing to pay 80% to the landlords. And how exactly has this affected students at East Bay? It has, it has affected students in the sense that a lot of us has, have been hit by this pandemic. Um, shelter is something that is a human right, and as humans, we've been impacted severely by this. And I think that everybody has felt some sort of insecurity when it comes to jobs. So if you don't have a job, you don't have a way to make money and you don't have a way to keep a roof above your head. And that's unfortunately been impacting many of us uh, across the world, across the nation. Um, so unfortunately, that's also something uh, students carry as a burden. And where exactly can California residents apply for the rental assistance? You can apply to the, re uh, the housing assistance program at housing.ca.gov. All right, well, thank you, Ariana. And for more information, visit thepioneeronline.com. Thank you, Scarlett and Ariana. Now, let's take a look at the video of Bobby Joe Valentine's performance. Bringing me down with the temperature. Shifts always feel like diseases, never the cure, but hold it together. I don't know. So, I grew up in North Bay in Rohnert Park, and uh, I grew up independent fundamental Baptist. So, it was a really insular community, warm hearted for people that were like in the, in the group, and, and you know, some rules that made it difficult for people that were outside the group. So, it was, it was an interesting childhood for sure. So, this is my new plan. Do the best I can with the pieces left. Steady hands, deep, deep breaths. When I was growing up, I found one of the portable like little Walkmans and I smuggled it into my bedroom and after my parents would go to bed, I would listen to top pop radio for two hours every single night before going to sleep. So I fell in love with like the Goo Goo Dolls and Britney Spears and all sorts of people that were telling an interesting story with a good melody. And to this day, that's kind of who I love. I 
think that you know music really uh, was like the birthplace of an individual personality. Other than that, I was doing what the church wanted and what the parents wanted me to do. So hearing music that resonated like with my, I don't know, like my spirit and my emotions that really uh, helped me become an actual human being with my own individual worldview and spirit. So I remember like when I was in college and uh, hearing Defying Gravity by the musical Wicked for the first time and that really like starting some spark that I'm still following to this day. Beneath my shoulder blades, raising me up with the temperature. But it's playing in front of people that have never heard your songs before that'll really give you an idea of who you're connecting with and where you can take your music. My art and songs have definitely felt like a lifeline um, during this time. For some people, this has been a huge like wellspring of creativity. But for, I think, most people that are that tune their creativity to the world, it actually served as like, for me, it's like my creativity got completely um, drained by all the like uh, uh, the communal stress that the world was going through. And so being able to sit down and like sing a song about hope that meant something to me or sing a song about um, getting through a hard time, it was, it was super meaningful and important. So I found a lot of comfort uh, in my music during this time. I feel like as, as humans, you know, we love being around other, other beings. We love being around other energy, but a lot of times we need a connecting device, like an extra thing that allows us to bond together and say, hey, me too, we feel this way too. And I think music is one of the best ways to do that. Gathering with a group of people who's already heard the lyrics and heart of someone else to hear them sing is one of the best ways of like creating family. So I, I think music is one of the, maybe the best like human tool we have for, for community. And community has been shown to like, actually literally heal people. Like if you're, you're in trouble health-wise if you're isolated too much. So I think when people say music heals, it's a real thing. Next year, I can't wait to get back on the road again. I've been able to play, you know, 40 of the 50 states with my music, and I've got a bunch of people that I know once kind of the um, courage gets built up and we find, keep finding ways to gather safely, uh, that can't wait to hear me. So I can't wait to get back on the road, play some music, and I'm getting invited again to, to play some weddings and universities and things like that, and it's been really great. So. I know it hurts, no need to show me. And it's been years since hey, I'm Baba Joe Valentine. You can find me on Twitter or Facebook just by searching my name. It's Baba Joe Valentine with no E in the Joe. And this is East Bay Live. I've got too many scars how I need some love to chase away my door. Here today, I welcome videographer Jocelyn Morales. We'll talk about how she captured the event. Hello, Jocelyn. Welcome. What was your vision behind the type of video you were looking to create for this event? So I was mainly focused on having like a sit-down interview, and I wanted to mix in some B-roll that was like documentary style. I think I was really inspired by Demi Lovato's documentary oh, yeah, okay. for this video. Very cool. What was your favorite part about capturing the event? My favorite part? I think... Um, you know, I actually think it was the being able to have a conversation with the artist because, yeah, I listened to his music and everything, but I think I really wanted to get to know who he was and what brought him up. And, yeah, I think it was just a very interesting experience overall. Nice. While you were creating this video, what would you describe the event's energy as? Uh, I think the energy was good overall because I think there was a lot of students there for this performance. Yeah, the turnout was very good and yeah, I, I enjoyed it and I think a lot of students enjoyed it as well. That's great to hear. Jocelyn, thank you for joining us today. We look forward to many more in-person events taking place once again at California State University East Bay's campus. Thank you, Manny and Jocelyn. It's great to be back on campus after more than a year of being online. 
Associated Students Incorporated Presents has many more on-campus events planned throughout the semester, so stay tuned, Pioneers. I'm Scarlett Schwank, and that wraps up this edition of East Bay Weekly, brought to you by The Pioneer Online. And I'm Monet Trochi. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next week.